this is Kate, this is my channel, and this is my top five Wednesday, top five books featuring witches. Um, I took, it took me a ridiculously, embarrassingly long time to realise that all of the top five Wednesday themes for October were Halloween themed. Um, Halloween is not a thing in Australia. Um, slowly people are trying to make it a thing, but it's, it's really not a thing. Um, and it's not part of my consciousness, except for when I watch American TV and everyone starts going a little bit crazy. Um, so, um, so for me to find or think, start thinking about these books was like, oh, this is weird, or to find all these like books about witches and creepy settings. And okay, but I've done it. I found my top five books about um, featuring witches. I have deliberately not chosen Harry Potter because obviously Harry Potter would just be like books one through seven. Like, I would have to, I would, and then I would have to like take out two of them to make top five and I just couldn't be doing that so I just avoided Harry Potter. But I've got some really good books, um, some of which I think um, people might not have heard of, which is always nice to share these thoughts. So the first book that I'm going to be talking about is Healed by Nicola Griffith. I haven't actually finished this book. This book is dense and intense and beautiful and long um, and one day I will finish it. Um, so this is um, about Saint Hilda um, who was um, but this is before she becomes a saint. It's probably I think it's meant to be just when she's a young woman. Um, she was the daughter of some minor king or lord. I couldn't quite figure out exactly who but like in like the dark ages um and as far as i can tell she wasn't actually a witch but at the time people were calling her a witch because she could see the patterns in things um you know obviously she's saint so she so they decided that she wasn't a witch after all and they saint she became a saint um so she was inspired by god but essentially she could see patterns in things and she could um manipulate people into doing what she thought they should do instead she could see the future because she could she could predict what was going to happen based on a variety of factors that nobody else had considered before so people thought she was a little bit supernatural um and this is like how much i haven't really read very much of it but what i have has been beautiful it's just dense um so when i have time i will get back to it maybe maybe over the christmas break i might try and tackle that again that's healed by nicola griffith um, the next one that I'm going to be talking about is also a historical novel, and that is Bitter Greens by Kate Forsyth. Um, this is kind of a retelling of Rapunzel, um, but it's the retelling of Rapunzel with the point of view of two different characters, like the witch, um, who was a, in this book is a um, Venetian courtesan in like the, um, what do you call it? Um, a redhead muse of the artist Tisano, so she's basically like Titian's muse, um, and she's the witch. Um, but it's also the story of Margarita, the the girl who she um, basically captures and locks away, um, and it's also the story of Charlotte Rose de la Force, who um, was the French nobleman during the time of Louis the fourteenth, Louis the fifteenth. 14th, sorry, Roman numerals, the 14th, um, and she historically was the first woman to write down the story of Rapunzel, um, and her story is utterly heartbreaking, but so you're, um, but you know, it's about the witch, well it's not all about the witch, she's not my favourite character, but she is a witch, she is a major part of this story, um, so, and then the way that the stories come together at the end is devastating like I got to the end and I was like oh my god that's and this oh and I had a, a fair bit of crying to do <laughs> so but that's a bit of green for Kate Forsyth a retelling of the puzzle um so the next book that I want to talk about is um Under My Hat Tales from the Cauldron which is a collection of sh an anthology of short stories edited by Jonathan Strong um this is um, mostly kind of like YA short stories, I guess, um, but there's some really good little stories in here, including um, one, I can't remember which one it was. It was, oh, 
Education of a Witch movie by Ellen Quages, um, which has stuck with me. And it's just about this little girl who starts having tantrums and stuff and makes things happen. And then her parents have another baby. And it's just, it's just how, basically how a wicked witch is born and how a little girl can turn into a witch just like by living her life and not you know she's not any great evil but it's just you know that when kids get angry and it's pure rage because they've got no way to adulterate it and no way to um articulate it it's just seething rage but she's got powers um and it's sort of kind of set in a little bit like powers don't exist so this little girl can do things that she shouldn't be able to do. Um, so that's one story that's just really stuck with me. There's lots of great stories by lots of really great writers, like even just going by the, the front cover, Neil Gaiman, Holly Black, Garth Nix, Kenneth Lee, Jane Yolen, Isabel Carmody, Frances Hardy, Margot Lanigan, Peter Beagle, Diana Peterfriend, Charles Dillian, Ellen Clages, Ellen Kushner, Delia Sherman, Patricia McKillop, Tim Pratt, and Brickett, and Jim Butcher. Like There are heaps of cool people in this book. You should check it out. Um... Um, and then the next book that I want to talk about is also by an Australian writer. Um, yeah, so Kate Forsyth is an Australian writer. Jonathan Strawn is an Australian editor. This is also an Australian writer, Matt Nagai Lanigan, and this is Sea Hearts, I believe, in um, America, maybe the UK. This book is published as The Brides of Royal Rock Island. Um, and this book is actually about Selkies, um, and it's beautiful and devastating and made me cry, and I loved it so much. Um, but there's the sea witch, um, who isn't really like a sea witch, like she's called a sea witch, but she's not like, not like Ursula the sea witch from the Little Mermaid. She's like this crazy old lady who lives on the, in this seaside village and is the one who's responsible for turning the seals into women and making this happen for the men of the town. So all the real women have to move away because they're not going to get husbands because the men just go down and capture a seal and turn her into a woman and hide her skin. Uh, and then they always have sons. Um, and what was her name? Miss Selka? Miss Kayla? Miss Kayla. And she was this tragic, vicious little old woman um, who basically has destroyed this town. Um, but because they wanted her to. Um, and it's, yeah, it's beautiful. It's beautifully written. And the way that these Selkie women deal with the situation and the way that their sons love them so much, um, love their mothers so much and their fathers are so proud of their sons, but there's this weird dynamic and it's just, it's beautiful. It is beautiful and I highly recommend it and this cover is stunning. Um, the cover that you often see for the Brides of Roll Rock Island is like all this pastel -y kind of nonsense, but this is this is what this book is about. Oh, look at that cover. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. Sea Huts slash the Brides of Roll Rock Island by Marnigan, Marnigan, blah, 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 Margot Lanigan. And the last book that I want to talk about is, um, I can't believe I still own this book. I read this book probably for the first time when I was about 11. Um, and it's like the trashiest little, um, like late nineties, early two thousands version of like Australian YA. And it's called Old Magic by Marianne Curley. Um, I was obsessed with this book. Like, look at this cover. How late nineties is that cover? Oh my God. Anyway, it's about, um, Kate. Um, who lives in, she's a teenager who lives in this little town in um, rural Australia and um, she her, she lives with her grandmother and her grandmother's a witch and she's a witch but everyone's kind of like, oh yeah, you're a witch, like you sell like new agey stuff in like your little mountain shop um, but she's actually got powers and she's like bullied and she's got one friend in her whole town and all this stuff and then this guy moves to the town called Jared and Jared is a klutz and he's falling over and he's like his family is really poor and everybody kind of makes fun of him until like the popular girl decides that he's kind of cute and Kate's like this dude has magic and that's why he's like when he gets angry that's why like storms happen and stuff and he doesn't believe her he doesn't believe her and then 
eventually he like he, there's a big disaster in his family and he decides like, I'm gonna believe you and they're gonna fix his problem by going back in time because like historically his family has a curse and it's got carried down through the generations. So they're gonna go back in time to the person who put the curse on and make him uncurse the family or catch him before he puts the curse on. I'm not entirely sure which way it goes, I can't remember now. But like they live in like this rural little town in Australia, they go back in time to like, I don't know, the 1600s in like rural Britain. It's a bit, a bit weird. But um, they have to pretend that they're married and there's like this romance and she's a witch and he's got magic powers too. And I loved it when I was like 12. <laughs> I loved it. So I've still got it. It's probably one of the few books that I've had for that long. Um, and I just, the cover just makes me laugh now. I just look at that cover. Like it's got the castle and the big eye and like check out all her makeup and she's got that like witchy 90s necklace. <laughs> um, anyway, great book. Haven't reread it. Probably will never regret it, but I'm going to hold on to it for as long as I can. <laughs> okay, so here are... Whoa. Here is my massive pile of um, top five books featuring witches. Let me know what you've picked and... Um, if you're going to do any like Halloween reading, I won't be doing Halloween reading, but let me just let you know if you will and what that will be.